Nidhi Nagabatla. Uh, I hope uh, she is with us. Uh, she is with us. Uh, uh, I was given a sign. Um, uh, Nidhi Nagabatla uh, is a senior fellow uh, and classic coordinator uh, at the uh, UN University uh, and um, in, uh, in nature, climate, and health. Uh, uh, issues uh, in Belgium, um, and uh, um, she's a, a sub sustainable science uh, specialist uh, and system analyst uh, uh, with, with a long uh, experience um, and had uh, led, coordinated, and implemented trans transdisciplinary projects in various uh, geographic regions in, Africa, uh, in Asia, Africa, Europe, and uh, America. Uh, she's working with international organizations and uh, leading research uh, and uh, uh, capacity development uh, initiatives. Uh, she's also affiliated with Oxford University, UK, and Leibniz University, uh, Germany, in uh, many in various roles, mostly related to uh, sustainable research, uh, science policy interfacing, and mentoring young uh, professionals. Dianini uh, uh, Nagabatla, we are happy to have you here. Uh, unfortunately, I have to ask you to try to keep uh, the, the serious time uh, time constraint uh, of uh, rough, roughly ten minutes. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chair. Much appreciate this kind of information, um, introduction, and I'll share my screen to also give a visual touch to my talk. I hope it's, um, I, uh, you can see my slides and you can hear me well, if you can confirm. Should I proceed? Yes, 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 sorry. Uh, so, good morning, everyone from Belgium, and I'm very delighted to be a part of this very interesting conversation and titled Game of Thrones between East and the West and so much of a, a rich thematic um, overlay of, for, this, uh, for this event. I'm going to be talking from a more meta perspective by, and I've, uh, I've kind of used a title of a Triskelion puzzle because I have three keywords here on my slides water insecurity, climate risk, and human migration. Perhaps you've heard them in a, in a more standalone fashion or maybe also more integrated and in, uh, the intersections that apply in these three keywords. But that presents us the puzzle that we will try to understand and possibly solve by uh, understanding what uh, narratives are are discussed around these, uh, this big puzzle. So I've divided for the sake of understanding my presentation into two parts. First, we'll understand the context, the interlinkages and intersections between these three dimensions of the puzzle. The climate change is emerging as a great displacer in the migration context. One of the stats from the World Bank shows how around the globe in different regions, several million people are falling victim to either a forced displacement or internal migration, sometimes across national and international borders uh, because of water stress and other climate related extreme events. These numbers are pretty indicative from different information sources. Let's start with uh, setting the scene. We have water crisis like you have IPCC climate scenarios. At United Nations, we have also set out water crisis scenarios how water and security acts in uh, six different uh, domains. Um, of course, the larger uh, water scarcity uh, because of less water availability, um, water related disasters, so the water climate intersection, of course, the water sanitation and health uh, um, issues or challenges that may apply to several countries. And we have substantiated with uh, it with trends and patterns based on qualitative and quantitative information. In the context of time, I will not go into detail of these uh, numbers, but you can see on the screen, screen that the problem is grave. The problem we have, have in terms of managing global water governance is, is challenging. The, the report is available um, by a click of your button from Google. Uh, the water security framework from um, in, from the UN Water and different UN agencies outlines the need for making water management more transdisciplinary, more multidisciplinary by incorporating aspects like financing, peace and political stability, more emphasis on governance and move away from demand supply equation. That is very much 
uh, integrated, uh, currently integrated in many states and communities worldwide. Just allocate water to different sectors, municipal, uh, agriculture, households. So move away from that mentality. Look for a long-term water security uh, vision that encompasses elements of peace and political stability. Stability. Immediately, you can um, you can see and read that the water discourse and the water narrative is going beyond its conventional boundaries. The human right to water and sanitation resolution 64 to 92 uh, around 12 years ago was a, again a milestone in pushing that agenda to move away from the conventional demand supply narrative. And uh, while many countries have not yet plugged this into their own national uh, planning and policies, the giving barriers like financial resources, capacity, technical and human and uh, technology to fulfill these goals. As you see on the screen, the indicators are very specific. Sometimes it's quantitatively uh, underlined very clearly. For example, if you have to go more than um, if, if your water collection time for your household need is more than 30 minutes, then your human right to water and sanitation is violated. But uh, of course, we are far from these goals. Um, uh, UN is also taking a leading um, a sort of steering this agenda by producing world water development reports every year. I specifically picked uh, from, uh, the report from 2019 because uh, when while we were uh, we were compiling this report, there were uh, very uh, touching facts that we came across, and one one of this uh, was that many people are left behind in the water governance. Um, and that is the reason some of these people um, are also forced to migrate because their basic needs are not fulfilled. And uh, you can, uh, I've, this is an oversimplification. We have start, uh, stats to back this, but world, world's most vulnerable and poor pay more than rich for clean water. And uh, of course, uh, then we, there is a lot of outreach and message uh, messaging uh, from different international agencies and nation and nations and member states of the UN to fulfill human rights to water, uh, to ensure that uh, their, uh, the, uh, the spillover impacts, including migration, is uh, managed effectively. So promoting engagement and equity is the overarching goal, but water for all, whoever you are, wherever you are, water is your human right, is pretty much a part of the Sustainable Development Goal Agenda. Uh, uh, a quick glimpse into climate crisis, and I'm sure I don't have to say a lot. You read it uh, daily newspaper, see it on the TV, or have a coffee conversation with your friends and colleagues um, about climate crisis. It's picking up um, in the geopolitical forums, in high level, um, in high level member state discussions, and um, uh, and uh, two newspaper um, headings from two different countries. Uh, one quoting from India, where. Uh, in the peak of the heat wave at 50 degrees, people are forced to conduct their daily duties because there are no other systems or there are no other so social support systems that can support them as an adaptation measure. And uh, the new scientist quoting from Sydney where uh, last year in 2021, the peri-urban communities experienced more than 10 degrees of uh, temperature increase in 10 degrees of average temperature in the in the city so uh, th th these are these may be numbers but the cascading impact of these numbers are multidimensional uh, increase of even uh, two to three degrees can cause you anxiety the anxiety at a household level can lead to household conflicts anxiety at a societal level can lead to some other kind of spillover impacts conflicts and uh, climate emergency um, um, events are now becoming popular both in the developing and the developed world. And you can see one such gathering from Europe uh, on the, the photograph. Uh, now let's uh, kind of quickly build a case for migration. This, uh, uh, this global map from uh, inter International Displacement uh, Agency of the UN I, and International Organization of Migration shows us that conflicts, uh, the geopolitical conflicts or the other conflicts um, from civil and social um, related um, related indicators have uh, long been surpassed by conflicts related to disasters in 2015. And see those big uh, blue blue circles on your, on your screen. These are disaster related um, conflicts and displacement as spillover impact of those conflicts. So we are really looking at uh, a paradigm geopolitical shift 
into understanding of conflicts and challenges like displacement. And one of our articles from our uh, research group uh, in IPS uh, two years ago um, was very well received even by the Secretary General's office, where we, we made a case that water, climate and conflict and migration would require to coping with 1 billion people on the move by 2050. Uh, the agency of the UN is, uh, is, uh, is uh, really putting a lot of effort to collect data because data is crucial and it forms uh, uh, is in the center of um, evidence uh, package for uh, international and national policy makers to, to make a case for migration within the water crisis and the climate uh, crisis discourse. And uh, COVID has added an extra, extra layer of burden in these existing discourses. When, uh, when the, the need for more hygiene, water uh, for sanitation and drinking needs was emphasized as a COVID prevention policy. How, I mean, with all these grim numbers of people receiving these services, provisions um, was already pretty low. I mean, this was an extra layer of burden, but also an opportunity for countries to relook and re-strategize of fulfilling the water related goals. So both the challenge and the strategy. With that context, let's move to part two. So we have a puzzle. We have a puzzle where intersections and interlinkages are complex. Sometimes we are able to understand them with the help of data, information, and knowledge. Sometimes not so well. And that can depend on countries, communities, and uh, scales. So how do we, what kind of instruments do we have to enhance our understanding to decode this puzzle? And I'm going to start with solutions first, but I'm also going to explain one or two case studies to where we have applied these solutions to understand whether they, they make sense or not. So Global Compact of Migration is an international global governance tool to, and I'm sure that I, in the context of time, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, maybe introduce it very quickly. It, it was negoci uh, negotiated in 2018 through the New York Declaration uh, for Safe uh, Migration and Organized Migration. And in 2019, by December, uh, the countries and member states signed this Global Compact to implement it in the coming years. It, of course, um, has uh, different dimensions of migration, including, uh, um, including internal migration in IDPs and refugees and uh, migration um, emerging from various uh, scenarios, political, geopolitical conflicts, or to some uh, minor extent, uh, climate extremes. But it uh, is more, more on post-migration or um, um, the post-trigger um, settling but not a lot of emphasis is given to the causalities of uh, understanding why would someone decide to move from the place they inhabit for and the place that is their cultural identity, that is their sort of a socio-economic uh, socio zone where they've earned a living. So causality has been given a less emphasis. So we are trying to outline a framework to give more emphasis for causality, for understanding the root and the cause of um, forced migration related to water and climate crisis scenarios. So in, uh, in 2020, we launched this report and a framework. This framework is just very guiding that can be applied to any situation at any scale by, uh, by plugging in indicators and by changing the context that may apply. This is just a kind of a skeletal framework that we wanted to propose because in this large myriad of intersection understanding the puzzle. Sometimes we don't know where to start. So just giving practitioners, just giving um, researchers somewhere to start. And uh, of course, there are the, from the technical side, there's a lot of modeling that's done to support uh, the evidence that goes into applying this framework. But uh, this, can be, uh, this can be nicely done if you have a more uh, interdisciplinary team working on the challenge. And uh, we, we try to apply it on some very known case studies, for example, the Arrow case studies. We, so again, we used uh, remote sensing data to, to emphasize the hydrological disaster it was 50 years ago, but also to kind of re-emphasize that some of the cascading impacts of this disaster was not given enough emphasis. So we can have a plan to rejuvenate or uh, Lake Arrow, but what about uh, understanding uh, those dimensions of displacement health concerns that still persist in the region? And so not going into detail, we have a published a paper which is open, open access and, and sort of decodes some of these um, 
com complex cascading impacts that were not given enough uh, emphasis during uh, the time that uh, um, the incident was happening or even decades after that. Sorry, could you come and uh, similarly for the case of Nile Delta, we again, uh, this is again, the, these, horse, these are the hotspots of uh, migration where the average uh, displacement was more than 100,000. So we picked up some case studies to make uh, a sort of a stock pitch our case. So for the Nile Delta, you can see, of course, these are some of these uh, geospatial um, parameters, the climate, um, the climate, uh, of course, um, projections, but you can see the urban sprawl, which is of uh, key interest for us. Uh, in this urban sprawl, you see the red color and then you see the graph over, over, over the past decades, uh, people are moving towards, uh, towards the water source, be it coastal areas or be it watersheds. Uh, from drying areas to more wet areas. So this is a more oversimplification and we wanted to sort of decode it at a very granular uh, scale. Sorry, and, uh, we also sorry, wanted sorry, to understand... Sorry, Nidhi, could, could you come to some, some conclusion? <clears throat> yes, uh, that's my next slide. So uh, we also wanted to understand that uh, how, how traditionally this area has um, seen migration. And in the context of that, we, we, we've done a historical analysis and I'm going to just um, share this project as my last slide. We're also doing this complex understanding of uh, com com building community resilience to these complex challenges through a project in Congo, which we have recently concluded uh, with the help of um, um, funding from the Canadian government. And that uh, there are several publications that I wanted to just uh, show you here. They are available if you want to learn more about this case study and I'm happy to answer any more questions in the common se se session if that is that is allowed and thank you again. Thank you very much for, for the very interesting presentation. Um,